this is important. And in fact, if there's one concept you remember 30 years from now, it really is this. And that is your sleeping brain is highly, highly intensively active. Why am I putting so much emphasis on that? It's because most people think that sleep is just a time when the brain and the body are powered down and switched off. It looks like everything's resting, right? You're not moving. The body may be at rest, but the brain, not at all. It is on fire because sleep is a privileged time for you to do things like consolidate your memories. Memory consolidation is simply the ability to take newly encoded information, new things that you've learned, and to actually commit it to permanent storage in the brain. Sleep is where that happens. So sleep is wildly active. If you're not sleeping, your brain isn't active. It's not that it's resting, it's that it's active and it's active in a way that allows you to truly be at your cognitive and emotional best. If you go out and you ask people at school or on the street, hey, what is sleep? What does it do? You will invariably get answers like, well, it's just a time where the brain rests and it rejuvenates and restores things. And it does restore things, but it does so much more than that. And what it has to do for you truly is active. It is a type of intelligence that you simply can't compute during wakefulness. Your brain can perform these incredible creative feats while it's sleeping that it physiologically cannot do while it's awake. So ask yourself, why? Why on earth have we evolved to spend one third of our lives sleeping if it isn't necessary? Would nature do that? No, it really wouldn't. Sleep exists because it's essential, not just for your ability to live a healthy life, but for your ability to be at your cognitive, intellectual, and emotional best. When I talk about sleep being active, as you see in this next slide, it's not just active, it's active in the most important brain regions that you need it to be active in if you're gonna be at your best. What are those regions? Well, the first is the hippocampus. This is actually a bilateral structure. You have two of them, okay? One on each side of the head. In fact, if you were to drill through both of your temples, you hit it. And I do not recommend you do that because if you damage the hippocampus bilaterally, that is on both sides, this is a very rare condition, but it leads to the kind of amnesia that's so profound. These are the patients that introduce themselves every single day to their neurologist over 25 years because they can never learn who that person is. That is how important the hippocampus is for learning and memory. What you're seeing here, it's wildly active while you're sleeping. That is because sleep is a privileged and protected time where you can consolidate what you've learned so you can remember it later and so you can use what you've learned flexibly and in creative ways that help you navigate this very difficult to predict present and unknown future. So it allows you to take what you already know and use it in ways that are different than the format that you already learned it in. Right next door to the hippocampus is the bilateral amygdala, also wildly active during sleep. The amygdala is incredibly important for emotions, but especially for negative emotions like fear and stress and anxiety. It's active during sleep because another thing sleep does for you is it processes the emotions of the day, the emotions that make us human, the emotions that help us know what to attend to and what's important to learn. So memory and emotion, they work together to help you sift through what you need to remember and what's okay to forget. So in addition to helping you consolidate memories, that amygdala activation is also helping you regulate your emotions, but it can't do that alone, all right? So the amygdala is active because you're processing the emotional tone of your experience throughout the day, and frankly, your experience throughout your life as a human. But also wildly active during sleep is a region called the ventromedial prefrontal cortex and the anterior cingulate. These are much more newly evolved systems in the medial prefrontal cortex, which is right here behind your, your forehead. The frontal lobe is actually quite big. And this is the part that's sort of closest to your eyes. And it has many roles that are important for you, but especially your ability to regulate those emotions. So the way that works is that the amygdala is wildly active at night, and it's especially processing, sometimes over-processing, negative memories, negative affect, negative emotions like fear and anger and anxiety but it does this under the regulatory control of this much more newly evolved system sitting in the medial prefrontal cortex that keeps it in check. So I don't want to denigrate the amygdala. You need your amygdala to make good decisions. Our emotions are incredibly important. 
The problem is when they get out of control. Then they can spiral out into an anxiety disorder or a case of clinical depression. So you need to process those emotions. You need to let them help you learn what's important about the world. But you need to do that while these much more newly evolved regulatory systems are keeping a break on it so that you can let the break up and then push it again, let it up and push it again. So it's a dance that happens between these newly evolved systems and these much more, quote, primitive systems, because yes, even lizards have amygdala. But by regulating the amygdala system, you're able to utilize your emotions in a way that's adaptive, that helps you make good decisions, that helps you figure out how to talk to people, to navigate emotional dynamics. So when you're sleep deprived, you get none of this. You cannot learn and remember very effectively. It's why memory is one of the first things that it goes when you are sleep deprived. You can't really regulate yourself in terms of your emotions. It's easy to snap at somebody or be inappropriate in a situation. You become emotionally labile or dysregulated. So if you're not sleeping, your brain isn't active. It's not that it's resting. It's that it's active and it's active in a way that allows you to truly be at your cognitive and emotional best. <laughs>